Squid Game's all anyone's talking about right now. It's trending on Twitter constantly. It's number one on Netflix. People are making TikToks about it. So if the teens are on board, then I'm gonna pretend like I'm on board too to be cool. No, I'm joking. I watched all seven or, no, it was nine episodes of this, isn't there? I watched all nine episodes, blown away. It was freaking awesome. Let's talk about it a little bit. Before I break down the show, I have a game for you. It's called subscribing to the channel. You can also hit the notification bell. That'll get you bonus points and it'll give you an upper hand in the next game to come, which will be at the end of the video. I hope you're ready for it. Let's start the review. You might be living under a rock and don't even know what I'm talking about. What is Squid Game, Adam? Well, I'll tell you, friend, in a very quick synopsis. The Netflix TV series showcases a bunch of people that are down on their luck, poor, can't make ends meet, have no other options but to go for broke or basically die trying. This isn't something people can truly seek out though. You have to be invited to this game. And the way to do so is via a business card that has a few sacred symbols on there. There's the square, the triangle, the circle, the X. No, there's no X. That's the PlayStation symbols. This is X free. But I thought about PlayStation every time I saw those symbols. So I don't know if it's good marketing or bad marketing considering what's going on in this game. That's right, friend, there's games, six of them, I believe. These people, that are chosen are whisked away to a secret island in the middle of nowhere where they have to compete in a series of games. If the person is able to complete all these tasks, they get a major payday in the form of a giant golden piggy bank with 46.5 billion won. Not one as in they won it, one as in that's the currency because this is a Korean film and that's the Korean currency. I didn't know. I, I was looking at the subtitles and whenever it would say like 35.5 billion won, I'm like, oh cool, they're, they're winning money. No, that's, that's lost in translation because I'm a moron. And since I'm an uncultured swine, I'm not even gonna bother pronouncing the names of these characters or the actors that played them. It's not because I'm being disrespectful, it's because I think I would be disrespectful if I tried to pronounce their names. I'm from Minnesota, so I already can't talk correctly. I'm not gonna make things harder on myself than they already are. For those that don't like to read, there is an English option. The, the dubbing is horrific. I would suggest using the subtitles. I always go with the subtitles. And I will point out when there are English speaking characters on the show, they're pretty bad. The acting is, is not ideal uh, in those scenes. Thankfully, it's few and far between, but still, I, I need to point that out because the rest is essentially gold. It's one of my favorite new shows. If this continues, which I'm sure it will because it's, it's doing really great numbers for Netflix, I, I just I just see this getting better and better. That said, the show does wrap up very nicely at the end of the nine episodes. There is room for growth for sure, but you could go away from one season and say, I got my fill, this was phenomenal, let me move on. Or rewatch it like I'm doing already. The games are the best part by far. They're playing all of these childhood classics in different countries, including some that I'm familiar with like Tug of War and Red Light, Green Light. They get more insane as the show progresses and you start to really connect and feel scared for all of these main characters. And there's a good half a dozen that you follow throughout this. And there's a great variety here. We have a sweet elderly man. We have kind of the doofus main character who gets a little bit lucky, but also takes a chance on people, he takes a chance on strangers. You have the cold calculated friend. You have a female pickpocket that's trying to make enough money for her brother and her family to come home. Uh, th there's so many wonderful characters. And what's so brilliant about the story is as the show progresses, these people start to really come out of their shell. They start to reveal things to their partners, to the audience, and even to themselves that they didn't know they had in them. Since these are missing people and there's this crazy game going on under the radar, there's also a subplot of a cop whose brother goes missing into this thing, so he starts to make his way into the seedy underbelly of this whole production. On the surface, this is a show about survival. You want to get to the end of the game, win the prize, and, and get out of there. I feel like I'm forgetting to mention an important aspect of these games. I just can't remember what. Oh yeah, if you fail to complete the tasks, you die! That's a big thing, I guess. The show starts with over 450 players, and we slowly whittle that number way down. Watching all of these innocent people be killed episode to episode is just brutal. The show really gets that. They get human nature. They understand that there's a part of us that's just total crap. We want to see some of this messed up stuff. We know it's pretend, so we tell ourselves it's okay. That's what I tell myself. Can't wait for season two. I'm a good person. 
Underneath that top level story, and you don't have to dig down far to find this, is the real message here, which is one of inequality. It's a story of the uber rich and the ultra poor and how they come together and clash with one another in this insane contest. The show is not for the faint of heart. There's tons of blood, there's tons of violence, there's tons of killing, there's some organ donation going on. And if you don't like sweating, ooh, you shouldn't watch this one because there's lots of sweating. Sweating on food, sweating on each other, sweating through clothes, it's... There's sweat on sweat action. I mean, it doesn't sweat the small stuff. If you don't have a problem with that sort of thing, then hey, don't sweat it. All right, I'm done with these awful puns. And I think I'm done with this review. Squid Game is ultra hype right now. And sometimes that can be a scary thing. For instance, in the past, Twilight films were ultra hyped. Fifty Shades of Grey was ultra hyped. This show deserves all the praise it's getting right now. It's easily the best thing Netflix has come out with in some time. Not that that's saying much. Their movies are atrocious for the most part. Their shows, decent. This though is top tier. If you haven't had a chance to watch it, this is my glowing recommendation to do so now. If you have seen it, let me know in the comments what you thought, agree, disagree. Like the video if you had some fun. Subscribe if you haven't. I put out a ton of movie related content and occasionally I'm getting more into these TV shows. So expect a little bit of everything. And hopefully I'll see you around. PlayStation. Oh, you're still here. Well, in that case, let's play a game. Let's see how long you can survive in a staring contest. I've already begun. I'm not sure if I've blinked yet. I'm not sure I know how to blink. I'm a well-oiled machine right now. How you doing? You still in it to win it? The loser is dead. The winner takes home the one, which is cash I've learned. It's not, it's not money, it's one. I think I might have blinked a second ago and I'm not sure. I think it's been 15 seconds for those bumpers to kick in. All right, bye.